So this video is a bit different to the woodworking workshop videos I tend to put out, but I wanted to show how we've turned our fairly boring grass area in the garden into something with loads of raised planters, all on a pretty tight budget considering the amount of planters that we've actually added. I've tried to divide this into a few different phases, and I'll include the timestamp for each of these in the description in case there's one in particular you find useful. I'll start by how we prepared the ground. So we didn't start this project with much of a plan, so we thought the first thing we'd do was just clear the grass of all the dead grass cuttings, and then we could clear an area on the patio where we could temporarily dump all the mud we were going to dig out on the border. With that done, we could start laying out a rough plan. I used some scrap strips from the workshop to make a mock-up of the size of the planters, and then once that was approved by the foreman, we could start to dig the border. I didn't necessarily do all the phases that I showed at the beginning in the order that they're in, so ignore the planters here, I'll cover how they're built in the next part. What I'm doing here is just laying out some gravel that I'll use to level, and I'm cutting a roller membrane that I'll lay on the ground, which will stop the planters being in direct contact with the mud. The first thing to do was to get the border as level as I reasonably could with the spade, and I used the brick line of the wall as my guide for this. So with that done, I could roll out the membrane and then use some pins to fix that to the ground. I could then spread a thin layer of stones across this, which should allow me to make fine adjustments to the level of the ground as is needed. I'm sure some people are going to say this is a pretty rubbish job and I need to do X and Y, but that's the majority of the groundwork done and at this point we can move on to figuring out the planters themselves. As I mentioned earlier, we didn't really have a plan for this but we knew we couldn't afford to do the sleepers around the whole border. So instead what we did is picked up some rough wood from B&Q and then started building a prototype. We ended up building a lot of planters and I've cut out loads of the footage to this as it became pretty repetitive. I wanted to show the common theme of how I cut all the wood to size and that is that I used a crosscut sled on the table saw with a stop block to cut all the end pieces of the planters to the same length. I could then use the circular saw with a carpeted square to cut all the sides to the right length. I also used the crosscut sled to cut some supporting brace pieces that will hold the different layers of the planters together. To attach the pieces of the planters together, I temporarily pin them together with the nail gun and then pre-drill and countersink a hole into which I can drive some 50mm decking screws that should hold off from rusting for a while. So because the wood's rough cut, it wasn't perfectly level, so I grabbed some shims, but overall I found this was overkill and I ended up just holding them in alignment while I pinned them together for all the future planters. So this planter design really is as basic as it gets, but it was really solid so we confirmed we were going to stick with this design for the rest of the border. We did realise when we put it into place just how much we dramatically underestimated the amount of wood it was going to require to build all of them. So the next stage was to sort of plan it out and then decide how much wood we needed to buy. So this is the rough plan of various lengths of planters we could have built, 
and how much it was going to cost in wood for the various configurations. You'll notice if you look at the sort of final clip that it didn't end up as either of these designs, but this was really helpful exercise to figure out a more cost effective way of building them, and it ended up saving us nearly 200 pounds. It was also well worth taking the time to look at various different suppliers of the wood. I'll link who I went with in the description below as they were a much better price than b &Q and the service was really great. So as I mentioned earlier, all the side pieces of the planters were cut down using the circular saw as they're too big to use the crosscut cell on the table saw and I don't have a miter saw. Once this was all built, I could carry all the longer pieces out into the garden to be assembled there as they're just too long and would be too heavy to assemble in the garage. With the wood cut to length and all in the garden, I could rinse and repeat the same process that I did for the first planter, which is to pin it all together, pre-drill a hole, and then drive in some screws. It's worth noting here that for each planter I built, uh, even though I had already sort of pre-made plans, I ended up just measuring the gap each time and then built the planter exactly to that measurement. Oh. So each of these square planters that we built followed this sort of same principle. We'd build each layer, put them into place to test that they fit, then we'd sort out the membrane and the sort of level of the gravel, and then we would fix it all together with the supporting bracket. Not brackets, braces. Yeah, braces. You can see them there, it lives painting it. So the rest of the square planters are really just rinsing and repeating this same process. I've included uh, clips of the remaining builds, just a sort of highlight reel, I guess. But if you want to skip forward to where I build the more awkward planters, again, timestamps in the description. So with the simple planters built, we could turn it to building the awkward planters, which basically just meant the one corner where the angles were not 90 degrees. So I started off by preparing the ground in the very same way that I did in the first part of this video. And with that done, I could turn my attention to building the awkward angles. I actually made some shorts on how I do this. Uh, so if you are a subscriber, firstly, why? Secondly, uh, if you don't want to wait for me to edit these sort of longer form videos, you can check out the shorts. I tend to give updates on the things I'm building there. So to recap what I've done, I've taken this handy angle gauge tool that I got off Amazon and I set it to the angle that I needed just by eye uh, outside in the planters. I can then set the table saw to that angle and that will allow me to cut the ends of the planters to the correct angle. So earlier in the video, I was cutting the end pieces to length using the crosscut sled. But in this case, I can't do that because the sled is set to cut pieces where the blade is at 90 degrees. So instead, I added an extension fence to my mitre gauge and I could then run the piece like that. I 
then assemble it in exactly the same way that I did before. So I'll pin it all together, then pre-drill a hole and then drive in a screw. So that ended up fitting really well and I could just follow the same process, measuring the lengths I need, setting the angle and then making the cuts. For the long pieces here, I couldn't use the table saw, so I had to rely on the circular saw and set the angle on that. I knew that one end was 45, so that was very easy. I could just cut the end off to 45, and then I could do the same trick using the angle gauge and then use the circular saw to cut the other end to length. So to set the circular saw to the right angle, I set the table saw again to the angle gauge, and then I read the angle that came from that. I could then undo the circular saw, set the angle to whatever matched the table saw angle, and then it was good to cut. I connected this together the exact same way I did all the other planters, pinned them, then I pre-drilled, then I screwed them together. So at this point the weather took a bit of a turn and it halted progress, but not before I could finish the other two sides of the planter. And this was super easy to do, the angles were the same as the other bit that I just showed on camera, and all I had to do was cut it to the correct length. So you've probably seen uh, throughout this video, especially with the longer pieces, because it's only an inch thick, there's quite a lot of deflection in the wood. Um, so I went through a process of reinforcing them by adding these sort of slats that you can see in the middle. I forgot to film this process because I just needed to get it done while the weather was good. But you can see here, there's slats going across and then there's also brace pieces that I've just pinned to the side across which I put some slats, which I'm cutting here. So these slats serve two purposes in the planter. The first is that they uh, sort of create a platform in which I can then line and I don't have to fill with as much soil because it was going to be more soil than I anticipated. And the second is that it adds another sort of layer of, uh, what you call it, I guess bracing, as well as those sort of vertical brace pieces I had in, uh, just to stop any deflection that might have occurred. And that is the main structure of the planters done. So I'll do another video where I line it and show you maybe what we plant as well. But yeah, that's, that's how the woodworking element of the planters was completed. If you wanna see what happens next with them, feel free to subscribe or you can comment and let me know what I did wrong and I'll try and fix it. Uh, but yeah, if not, thanks. <laughs>